Half-Life 2 was a good-ass game. You remember when Valve were good, don't you? Back when they made the good shit. TF2, Portal, Left 4 Dead, Half-Life. I remember years ago, not long after I first got Steam, I got Half-Life 2 and I really wanted to download it, but I wasn't allowed to because I lived in Australia and we only had like 10 gig of internet per month back then. So I had to wait till the end of the month just before our data was renewed before I could download it, and eventually I finally got it. But it wasn't to play Half-Life, it was to play Gary's mod. Eventually I realised how terrible I was at making TF2 animations and got bored of shooting G-Man in the face, so I actually played Half-Life 2. And then I realised it was a good ass game. Now what you gotta know about me is that I'm a little bitch. No matter what it is, movies, video games, ebooks if the narrator is too spooky, I can't hack that scary shit. Half-Life isn't exactly a horror game, though you could make a case for Ravenholm, but it still managed to frighten the fuck out of me as a kid. And it still kinda does. Headcrabs being the serial offenders. Despite the sometimes cheap jump scares that the game throws at you, I still enjoyed the heck out of it. And looking back now, there is a lot to like about Half-Life. Whether you're a fan of shooters, zombie games, or even big brain puzzle games, there's a little bit of everything. There's a lot of variety in the gameplay itself. There's a stark contrast between the running and gunning through the canals of City 17 to the spooky saw blades in Ravenholm and the careful platform hopping in sand traps, though it never feels like a different game. The game always introduces each new mechanic or feature carefully, so there's never any doubt about it. It doesn't just throw stuff at you and expect you to make do, it shows you how it works and then it builds upon that. And in some of the later stages, it will start to mix all of these different mechanics together. Half-Life does a lot of things, but it does them all right. Root Canal is a great example of the run and gun FPS genre, We Don't Go to Ravenholm plays out like a zombie horror game, and the later chapters incorporate all of the little bits together, always with half life spin on it and an emphasis on its physics engine. It's clear that Valve are pretty keen to show off the new engine and physics with this game, which leads to a lot of fun moments. Using props to kill enemies, running over antlions in your scout car, and annihilating the combine with the powered up gravity gun. Though it might not be quite as impressive as it was when it was initially released in 2004, the physics engine ties in really well to basically all aspects of the gameplay, the combat especially. And for a game that came out in 2004, it still holds its own mechanically. The physics engine can be a little bit interesting at times, but the gunplay is fluid and the other tools that the game gives you really embellish the combat, and to a greater extent than its predecessor, give you more tools and freedom to do so. That being said, the AI can be a bit lackluster. They're not always the smartest bunch. In all honesty, you could argue that the zombie AI is smarter than the Combine are at times. This is one of the few parts of Half-Life that hasn't aged particularly well. It can be a little bit repetitive at times, but when the game gives you the freedom to tackle the combat how you want and do things a little more unorthodox for your run-of-the-mill shooter is when the game is at its best. And when it is at its best, you feel like a badass, which is what the game wants you to feel like. You're Gordon Freeman, the most badass is the mother trucker in this hellhole, and the game wants you to know it. Right from the get-go and throughout the game, Half-Life does a great job at setting you up with these establishing shots of the different areas you travel through. It's great visual storytelling that helps set the tone and what kind of gameplay you should expect from each stage. Half-Life is always setting its atmosphere, whether that's the dreary skies of City 17 or the quiet murmuring of Breen's speech as you march through Nova Prospect. The visual storytelling in Half-Life backed up by its audio design and soundtrack are one of the hallmarks of this game, one of the hallmarks of Valve's game design in their Source Engine titles, and should not be understated. The fact that all the cutscenes are simply played in the engine while we still control Gordon with an inability to skip them does mean that the replayability suffers a little because of it. They're fine the first time you play through and it's not like the game is filled with them, but there are those moments where you wish Alex would just shut the hell up so you could keep playing the goddamn game. Regardless, the cutscenes feel like they play second fiddle in the narration of this game. The story might go over your head a little bit if you've never played the original Half-Life, but you'll discover a lot about this world just by having a look around. And I mean on a technical level, this game is looking damn fine for a game that came out in 2004. I know in my video about graphics I said it hadn't aged well, but that was more so in comparison to Team Fortress 2 due to the art style. For a game that's got a little bit more realism about it, it's looking pretty good for its age. There's still a few jagged edges and some low quality textures, but hey, I can think of plenty of games that came out after it that don't look as good. Despite its age, Half-Life 2 has always been a mainstay in the games industry. 
It had a lot to live up to after the success of its predecessor and it lived up to it, and has found its way to being a staple in any respectable Steam library. It's not without its faults and it can be a little bit clunky at times, but this game is almost 15 years old, which is crazy to think about. There are not many first person games that can hold up so well 15 years after they first came out. Half-Life 2 is a game that does a lot of things, but it does all of these things right. Between the diverse and interesting gameplay, to the way it sets up the world it encompasses, to the impact it has had on the industry as a whole, it will always be known in the history books as a good-ass game. And you know, I could say a lot more about Half-Life. But in the meantime, this is where I get off.